Today, I have the privilege of talking about plant-based diets and the prevention, treatment, and remission of type 2 diabetes. And I have to say it, the real truth about health, the one luxury is we get a good chunk of time to go through this. So I'm able to go into more detail than I often uh, am permitted to do. So let's begin. We'll start with an overview. I want to talk a little bit about type 2 diabetes remission, in, including the definition and the lines of evidence that we have for the remission of type 2 diabetes. And then I want to look more specifically about what we know about the evidence for plant-based diets in the prevention, treatments, and remission of type 2 diabetes. And finally, we'll end with the practical piece, uh, 10 steps to optimizing plant-based diets for treating type 2 diabetes. So let's begin with the big question. Uh, can type 2 diabetes be driven into remission? And the answer is absolutely. While type 2 diabetes is progressive for many people, it doesn't have to be. Historically, type 2 diabetes, especially in medical communities, was viewed as a chronic, irreversible condition. And treatment was really centered around blood glucose control. We now know that for many individuals, remission is possible. And while glycemic control still remains important, the therapeutic goal needs to evolve from management to remission. And, you know, for uh, many years, the whole concept of remission was very controversial. It's not controversial anymore. In fact, remission has been defined by a number of leading diabetes organizations, including the American Diabetes Association. And a consensus uh, statement was released in four leading diabetes journals in 2021-2022. And the uh, diabetes remission was defined as having an A1C of less than 6.5% measured at least three months after the cessation of glucose lowering medications. So not only is it accepted in the mainstream, we have a definite definition of remission. And we have a couple of lines of evidence for the remission of type 2 diabetes. And it all began with the first line of evidence, which was actually bariatric surgery. The second with diet therapies that produce sufficient weight loss to restore insulin sensitivity. So let's begin with bariatric surgery. We'll touch on this very briefly. But in the 2000s, studies reported that bariatric surgery led to the rapid normalization of blood glucose, even, and this is an important even, prior to significant weight loss. And this essentially suggested that fat distribution, particularly around the liver and pancreas, may play a pivotal role in type 2 diabetes pathophysiology. And uh, this finding uh, intrigued a professor, uh, Roy Taylor, who is a diabetologist in the UK. And in 2008, Professor Roy Taylor proposed the twin cycles hypothesis, which um, was published in the journal Diabetologia, which is a very prestigious uh, diabetes journal. It was a conceptual leap that reframed type 2 diabetes as a reversible condition tied to excess ectopic fat in the liver and pancreas. And the twin cycles hypothesis looks like this. So cycle one is the liver cycle and, and it involves chronic excess energy intake which results in uh, liver fat accumulation followed by insulin resistance, unchecked gluconeogenesis, which is essentially a failure to suppress glucose production. 
and then excess insulin secretion, which results in de novo lipogenesis or the production of uh, fatty acids, which get dumped into the bloodstream. And this triggers cycle number two, which is uh, the cycle um, of the pancreas. And what happens here is we get a spillover of excess fatty acids into the pancreas, which causes beta cell dysfunction and reduced insulin secretion resulting in hyperglycemia or high blood sugar. Now, Roy Taylor hypothesized that interrupting these two cycles by reducing liver and pancreatic fat could reverse the metabolic defects of type 2 diabetes and trigger remission. And that brings us to uh, the second line of evidence, which is diet therapies that produce sufficient weight loss. So Roy Taylor tested the twin cycles hypothesis uh, using very low calorie diets between about six and 850 calories a day that featured formula shakes and non-starchy vegetables in some cases. So the first two studies he did were counterpoint and counterbalance. Counterpoint was a small study of 11 individuals, all of whom had short-term uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, 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 no more than four years duration. This was an eight-week eight trial using a very low-calorie diet. And the result was that it normalized fasting glucose. It normalized uh, the amount of fat in the liver and pancreas and it increased insulin sensitivity. And MRI scans showed about a 30% reduction in pancreatic fat, which in turn improved beta cell function. And this essentially provided proof of concept uh, for the twin cycles hypothesis. And then in 2016, uh, Roy Taylor and his group did a larger study with 30 individuals. And what was interesting about this study is, is they included people with varying uh, durations of type 2 diabetes. In fact, from uh, I think about three months to about 23 years. And uh, again, it was an eight-week eight trial uh, with about 800 calories a day. Remission was achieved for at least six months in 40% of participants. Remission, however, was more likely for those with short-term uh, type 2 diabetes duration, so who had had diabetes for no more than six years. Um, now, I should say it's really interesting that I think there were, uh, I think it was nine people that had long-term, at least eight years or more uh, diabetes, and none of them except one uh, went into remission. And the one that went into remission, I believe, was the one that had had diabetes for the longest, around 23 years. Now, both liver and pancreatic fat had to fall below a personal threshold for remission, which was determined by MRI imaging. And, and this personal fat threshold varies widely between people. So there's a certain amount of fat that it, within the liver and pancreas that will trigger these, these um, you know, insulin resistance and other metabolic uh, problems. And these two studies uh, directly tested the hypothesis and it showed that, that weight loss and ectopic fat reduction could store metabolic health even without bariatric surgery. And then uh, uh, Roy Taylor's group went on to do another trial in 2018, which was a much larger trial of 306 participants, all of whom had had diabetes for no more than six years, and all of whom were overweight with BMI or, or obese with a BMI between 27 and 45. And they randomized these individuals to usual care, the control group, uh, versus a structured weight loss intervention, which was a very low calorie uh, diet of about 825 to 853 calories per day. And again, it was total meal replacement for 12 weeks and then reintroduction of food and maintenance to 12 months. At 12 months, 46% of the uh, intervention participants were in remission. And that's having an A1C under 6.5% without uh, medications. 
And the rate of remission was directly associated with weight loss. And I'll talk a little bit more about that a little later in the presentation. At a two-year follow-up, 36% of these participants remained in remission, establishing that remission is durable with maintained weight loss, which means if you, you, know, if you keep the weight off, uh, the diabetes uh, will continue to be in remission. And, uh, and then uh, Roy Taylor's group went on to do another really interesting study. This was smaller, 2023. Uh, they, this was the personal fat threshold hypothesis. There were 20 individuals. And this um, uh, hypothesis suggested that, diff that suggested different individual thre thresholds for lipid overspill and adverse uh, overspill to the pancreas and adverse effects on beta cell function. And to test this hypothesis, participants with type 2 diabetes for uh, no more than six years and a BMI under 27, so fairly normal weight or just very slightly overweight, underwent repeated 5% weight loss cycles using about a diet of about 800 calories a day. And in this trial, 72% of participants achieved remission with the same underlying pathophysiological changes as already demonstrated in overweight and obese individuals. This study essentially confirmed the personal fat threshold hypothesis. And then uh, uh, beyond Roy Taylor's work, a number of, of uh, researchers in, in uh, uh, different countries from the UK, India, Thailand, Denmark, Qatar, Sri Lanka, uh, did tests using either low calorie or very low calorie diets to, um, to, to, to see if they could induce remission in their participants.